Hey everyone, I'm Wingman, and welcome to today's tutorial for how to make a radial menu tool selection wheel just like this. Uh, we, we can add all sorts of configurable, parameter, configurable parameters, we can make change these colors here, we can make it bigger, we can make it bigger there, thicker lines, and whatever else we want. We can also hold up in the game, hold a key to pull up the menu, select whatever tool you would like, and release it to select the tool for our hypothetical player. Let's dive in. So before we dive into making the selection wheel itself, let's set up the base scene that we're going to put it into. Uh, start with just a basic node, we'll call it main. And inside that we want a canvas layer to hold our UI elements because we're gonna be dealing with UI controls here. Um, inside that, let's just add a basic label. Uh, we're going to say player equips tool, um, and right now it's nothing. And so okay, let's save that scene for now. And with that ready, let's go ahead and create a new scene for our selection wheel itself. Uh, we're going to be using custom drawing uh, with the UI system, so make the base node a control. And we're, we're just going to use a base control because uh, we're going to be drawing it ourselves instead of using built-in systems. Uh, gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, so let's go ahead and call this our selection wheel and save that scene. First things first, let's uh, grab our selection wheel, use this button here to set our anch anchors to the middle of the screen so that way it's not going to be, you're not going to have the screen, the size of the selection wheel distorted by the size of where we, whatever we put this in. We want it to be a circle based around uh, wherever we put it, the center point here. Then we want to add a script, just call it selection wheel, that's fine. And uh, where things get spicy is we're going to add at tool at the top of the script. What that does, you'll notice it turns the little cog blue there, uh, is it allows you to execute code in the editor before even booting up the game. And what that's going to allow us to do is when we call our custom draw commands, it'll show it in our editor here so we don't have to run it every time just to see what's happening. So the first thing we're going to want to draw is our big background circle. Actually before we do that let's uh, set a few parameters first. We're going to want the, we'll use exports for that, this at export decorator. Uh, what that does is it will allow variables to show up. Uh, so we can say export uh, var background color of type color using the colon syntax there. And so what that does, if we reload the scene again, sometimes it's a bit janky, we can now set this background color parameter in the inspector here without having to go in and mess with default values in code. We also want to set a uh, outer radius variable. Uh, this is gonna be an int integer. Uh, we'll set a default of 256. That's uh, pixel size. Again, reload to have that show up. And now we can set both these over here. And these parameters are going to decide what our background circle looks like. So we're going to call draw circle here to draw a circle. Uh, this is, again, a built-in function for any canvas item nodes. Position vector 2.0. That's going to draw it again at the middle of the screen at, at 0, 0. Uh, radius, we're going to use that outer radius we just declared. Uh, color, background, color. So now when we come over here, we see that not much happens. If we reload save scene, we see our, our circle. Pretty great. So we have a circle here. We have our background circle. Uh, but if we go over here and we try to change these parameters, not much happens, and that's because when we're loading the scene, we're just calling the draw function once. And so if we want it to change, remember we change the parameters, we're going to need to go into our process function, uh, which is automatically called every frame, and hit Q redraw. So now when we come over here and we change this, and we may have to reload again. it changes on the fly as we change these. And this is the beauty of using uh, custom drawing. I can come in here and I can make a small circle. I can make a ginormous circle. 
or we can just set it back to our default. So let's set it to a nice kind of dark-ish gray there. That looks pretty good. Next thing we're going to want to draw is a kind of smaller circle around the middle for our center cell. Uh, some games have kind of, we'll use the center cell as kind of a default value, um, and that's a paradigm I really like, so we're going to learn how to do that right now. We're going to need, we're going to, need to add a couple more uh, export variables first. We're going to need a line color, which as you can guess is going to be another color. We're going to need a inner radius. And I'll set that at 64, something quite a bit smaller. We want a, a small circle in the middle. Uh, and also a uh, line width. It's going to be an inch, and that's going to be very small. That's just how wide the lines are we're drawing. For the inner circle, we don't want to. We don't need to draw a whole circle like this. We just want to draw the perimeter of the circle. Um, that's going to be done with draw arc. Again, centered. You can see it's got a. Uh, a lot more parameters here. We will need to set all those one by one, uh, but I'll take you through them. So position set at zero again, this is fine. Radius, this is gonna be our inner radius, just like last time. Now start angle and end angle. This is where we get into trigonometry, unit circles or pre-calc. Um, I'll discuss some of that in a minute, but for this, we just wanna draw the entire circle. So we're gonna wanna go from uh, zero to 2 pi radians, which is the full perimeter of a circle, as we're going to start at 0 and finish at uh, a special built-in parameter called tau, which is equal to 2 times pi. Uh, it's just a nice little shortcut for that. Point count, you can, that's just uh, how many points it uses to draw a circle. You can put in whatever you want there, and uh, that's probably even overkill. Uh, color, this is going to be our line color. Width is a line, is our line width. And then anti-alias, let's set that to true. That's going to uh, kind of smooth those lines out a bit with anti-aliasing. Now we come here and reload the scene a bit. We've got that inner line there and we can set it to a lighter color with a little more contrast. Let's, that looks pretty good there. Now, before we get too much Farther, let's hop back over into our main scene and add our selection wheel to the scene to see how it looks. If we run the scene, it shows up in the middle, nice like we wanted to, but uh, it's not really doing how a radial menu works, where you, it stays hidden most of the time, you hold a button to push it up, and then it you release it to let it go. So we're going to need to start with it hidden, and we're going to need to add a way to pull it up. So we're going to go to Project Settings input map and add uh, you can call it whatever you want I'm just going to say tool select because we're using it as a tool menu here and add that so hit this plus sign um, then hit whatever key you want to use to pull up the menu I'm going to hit tab I know that just makes sense to me then if we go in here and create a script for our UI add a process function and now we can say if input that is action just press tool select that's the action we just set up in our input menu uh, when you put something in this input map it then gets registered as an action in this input singleton so we can say if that's just pressed then selection wheel dot show And it works, uh, but now it's stuck there. So we need to make it go away again. So we'll say lf inputs dot is action just released. Tool so select, same thing. We'll say uh, wheel dot hide. Now we can pull it up, pull it as long as we want, let it go working perfectly. The next thing we need to draw is the lines dividing our outer circle into cells. The challenge is that we want it to be configurable with the ability to change how many cells we have and therefore where the lines are drawn on the fly in our code based on how many options we want there to be in the wheel. So to mock that up, let's say we want a circle with three options. We want a circle with four options and a circle with five options. 
All these are going to have our little circle in the middle for option one. 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 Uh, so the three minus one, that leaves two options left. We're going to need to divide into halves. We need a line here and a line here. Option two, option three. Over here, four minus one, we're going to need to divide the remainder into thirds. So line here, line here, line here for options two, three, and four. And the same pattern here. We need fourths, line here, line here, line here, and line here for two, three, four, and five. So how do we calculate this automatically? That's where something called the unit circle comes into play. If you're used to working in degrees, you'll notice that one revolution around the circle is 360 degrees, 0, 90, 180, 270, back around to 360. Uh, the radians are gonna be this bigger, these bigger numbers along the outside here uh, starting at zero, once again, going around to two pi. One full uh, perimeter of the circle is two pi radians, which is also equal to the tau keyword that we've used in Godot already. And we can also, uh, you'll also notice we can express any value along the circle as, as a ratio of pi. This is pi over two. This is pi. This is uh, three halves pi. Uh, or in our case, this is going to be one quarter tau, one half tau, three quarters tau. So hopping back into our code here, uh, the first thing we need to add is another export variable to tell us how many options we're going to have. So export var, var options, and let's make it array, be, an array so we can edit it in the inspector and add option resources. We'll get to the specifics of that later, but for now, just set it to an empty array. And then over here, we can add, let's, say for example four elements uh, we'll leave, leave them as null for now we will add uh, the ability to set those later uh, so that's again going to look like this middle one here the first element goes in the middle and we need three cells in the border that's this one is going to be at zero this is going to be at one third tau and this is going to be at two thirds tau it's a t for tau tau is the uh, greek letter t and the other thing to point out um, on these diagrams is that the math doesn't really work with fewer than three options so as we go back into our draw function we want to start by saying if len options is greater than or equal to three um, so we don't just get any weird things going on if you get an array of only one options because if you have only that few options then you probably don't want to be using this sort of menu anyway and so to draw the separator lines, I'll say for i in range lin options, for i in range lin options, sorry, options minus one, because again, we are only doing halves for three, you know, three outer cells for four and so on. So we need to say options minus one. Uh, we need to get the uh, the coordinate points. So rads, that's short for radians. Uh, rads kind of the standard thing there. We'll say um, i divided by len options minus one, and that's how we get our our one third, two thirds, or zero, one thirds, two thirds for i equals zero, i equals one, i equals two, and then we'll take that and we will multiply by tau, and that's going to get us those points around the uh, the edge of the circle, and so. Next, we'll get the actual point from that. Uh, we're going to use a function called vector two dot from angle, and that's going to convert this radian value, which is again a a single numeric value. That's like saying pi over two. It's a single value, and that's going to convert it into that number there. So point is equal to vector two dot from angle rads, and now we're going to draw line. Again, a lot of variables here. We'll say from points times inner radius, uh, because this the way this is structured here, this gives us a uh, a vector with a length of one. And since we have multiple layers in our circle, we want to go just from the edge of the inner circle to the outer circle. We don't want to start all the, all the way in the middle because we want to keep that middle as its own cell. 
So we're going to start from point times inner radius, and then go to point times outer radius. Uh, we're going to draw this in our line color with the width of line width and with true for anti-aliasing. Pretty basically the same parameters as this function up here, except without uh, without the point count, pretty much. So now we go back over. Let's reload the scene. Oh, it's mad at me. Invalid operands, array and int in operator or something. Oh, I see. I wrote options minus one in there instead of an options minus one. There we go. Options is an array we need to subtract from the There we go, see if it likes that better. There we go. Okay, so now for an array of five, we've got our five cells. Zero, or one, two, three, four, five. And it'll go all the way down to three. You can, yeah, add as many as you want. And we'll again, leave it at four for now. So now let's circle back to this options array that we declared a minute ago. Uh, we need some options to select from. And uh, I'm going to use this tools.png little sprite sheet that I made for an old project, project a couple of years ago. It's got six 32 by 32 pixel tiles uh, with one blank one at the beginning. These are each simple kind of tools like you would find in, our typ in your typical survival game. And also uh, just this empty one to say, you know, sheathed all tools don't carry anything at the moment. We're, we're going to want to go in here and say new script. We're going to inherit from something called Atlas Texture, which is a type of texture, but it allows you to select a region within the texture, kind of like a sprite node does, but uh, you can use it in various UI nodes uh, that don't have that built in like sprite does. Uh, I use it with texture rects a lot. Uh, we're, we're going to call it wheel option.gd. We're going to give it a class name because this will allow us to declare it in our export wheel option. I come down here, just export bar name is equal to the string. And that's all we need to do for now. Uh, so now when we go back over to our selection wheel, in our selection wheel class, we can, instead of just saying equals empty array, we can declare it as array wheel option. So now when we go over here, hold on, it's not liking that for some reason. Uh, when in doubt, reload the scene. There we go. Uh, when you're dealing with the at tool, it just gets that way sometimes. We can go down here and say new wheel option. Uh, we're gonna make this call it none for wielding no tool and atlas this is going to be load your load your texture tools.png with 32 height 32 that's going to be starting at zero so that's fine uh, go down to this next one new wheel option this is going to be again same image uh, 32 by 32 we're going to start at 32 pixels over so now we're we have this shovel here and we'll call it the shovel. Uh, for the next one, we're actually going to need six here. Uh, but I will do these off camera because it's the same thing over and over again. And rendezvous with you guys here in a minute. And now we're going to get to draw these icons on our cells in the appropriate places. Uh, first thing, we're going to want to add uh, one more constant up here. That's going to be const sprite size. And that's going to be 32 by 32. That again is the size of each one of these images. Sorry, vector two. Uh, this is a 32 by 32 sprite. Each of these are. Uh, so this is going to let us do some math. Right at the beginning, we're going to want to uh, calculate an offset. Which is just uh, the sprite size, half of that size uh, going up and to the left. Because of the way it draws, it'll draw it. Sometimes it'll draw the image starting from uh, 
the top left of the image instead of in the center. So if you want the image to be centered, we're going to have to add this offset to the, our drawing positions. First, let's draw our center cell. We're going to use the draw texture rec region function. Uh, to get the texture, we're going to go options zero. Get the first one here, dot atlas, and that's uh, this texture variable here. We're going to want to, and we're going to give it a rect uh, to give it the dimensions of where to draw it. And that's going to, because we're starting in the center, we just need to give it the offset and the size. And then we're also going to need to give it the region. Options zero dot region. And it's still not showing anything here because, again, our first option here is blank, but if you had something there, then it would. Uh, and if not, then just do your usual reload save scene as is necessary with that tool. So that was pretty easy, but for drawing the others, we're going to have to go back to our unit circle radian math. First, let's start by iterating through our loop for, for i in range. We're going to want to start at 1 because we've already drawn cell 0. Then options, if I can type properly. And we're going to want to get the starts, rads, and the end rads for each cell we're drawing. And that's where we get back to our fraction. So the start is going to be tau times i minus 1 divided by lin options minus 1. And the, that's our starting fraction. Our end fraction is going to be the same thing, but without, but with just i instead of i minus 1. So we are, we are getting this, uh, whoops, messed that up. It's going to be tau times i. Then we want to get the midpoint of those because we want to draw in the middle. These are the boundary lines of the cell. Now we want to get the midpoint of that cell. That's going to be start rads plus end rads divided by 2. And the reason we add this uh, times 1 at the end is sorry, times negative 1 at the end is because when we do our unit circle math um, in traditional coordinate math, the positive direction is up for plus 1. But in screen coordinates uh, here in Godot, you can see these numbers on the side here, positive is downwards. Uh, so having this, so flipping that coordinate around just adjusts for that. Uh, so that so this mid rads that gets us the middle angle of the cell, and now we also want to get the mid radius. We'll call it radius mid to be less confusing, and that's going to be inner radius plus outer radius divided by two point zero. Yeah, just take take the average of those again. From these, we can calculate our draw position, which is going to be radius mid times that vector two dot from angle we discussed earlier with our angle here, mid rads, and then we add our offset. This gives us position we need to, again, use draw texture rect region with options i, sorry, i dot atlas and the rect two with our draw pause, sprite size, and options i dot region. Let's go in, reload our scene, and boom, we've got all our icons drawing in our cells. Look how beautiful that is. So now we want to add the ability to mouse over and highlight specific cells. First, our uh, selection wheel needs to know which cell it has selected. We'll give that a default of zero. It doesn't need to be exported because that's entirely internal. Uh, it's, we're not setting that manually. So we'll go down here in our process function. That's something we're going to check every 
frame. Uh, we're going to get the mouse position by going get local mouse position. That's always going to get the mouse position relative to the current object. Uh, mouse radius, that's just how far the mouse is from the center. It's going to be mouse pause dot length uh, because our that's going to be compared to zero zero since our thing is at the center of the screen. Uh, if mouse radius is less than the inner radius of our selection wheel, we can just say selection is equal to zero. Uh, that's our intersection here. If mouse is in here, we want to highlight this intersection. Uh, but if it's outside this intersection, we want to look at one of these outer cells. Oh, I said select, so selection. There we go. Now it's not mad at me. Again, if it's outside, then we want to get uh, what is the mouse angle and radians. We're going to use something called F pause mod, which is necessary because sometimes certain certain functions in Godot will give you positive values for values up here and then negative for ones down here. But we want to be on a scale from zero to two pi, just nicely positive all the way around. And so this F pause mod, uh, if we go mouse pause dot angle times negative one again for that same uh, uh, thing we did up here, dealing with that. Uh, screen coordinates versus math coordinates. And then we'll set that on a scale of zero to tau. So that'll give us uh, our angle and radians. And we can say selected is equal to seal, which just rounds up integer wise. Mouse rads divided by tau, get that fraction. So how far around the circle are we? Uh, times, you know, how many options do we have? Just need one more round of parentheses there. That should work there. And, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm typoing my own stuff. Okay, and now just to check, we can throw a print in there, reload our scene, and let's, yeah, zero, one, two, three, four, five. You can see this console down here. Uh, so our selection wheel is tracking where we're hovering. Get rid of that print because it's annoying. And then, and then inside our draw function, we can start to deal with uh, what do we do when we know what cell has been highlighted. Easiest way to do that is here. Um, once again, the center cell is gonna be the easiest. If selected, is equal to zero, but we will need to add one more, uh, one more internal variable first, and that is going to be the uh, one more color. That's going to be our highlights color, which once again is going to be a color type. And over here, we want this to be somewhere between the dark background and the lightest line color so we'll set it something like there for now and then we'll come back to that if that doesn't look good so inside our if block here let's go down here and draw that circle for the interior highlight uh position that vector 2.0 uh right in the center it's going to go out to our inner radius and it's going to be the color of our highlight color Let's check that out and you can see when we mouse over the interior of our our our, our middle cell it highlights uh, unfortunately that's the only highlight we have so we'll need to add more so let's hop back into our code and in here inside the code where we're drawing our outer slice textures uh, right in here go if selection is equal to i and we want to uh, put this code here before we draw the tool for the outer slice because we want the tool to appear on top of the highlight. We don't, we don't want our highlight to block out or wash out the tool. We want it to still appear the same. First thing is going to be called points per arc. Just set that to 32. Um, that's going to be, we look back at our diagram, diagram again. We want to uh, color an arc like this here, right? Just this outer arc. So we need to get this inner arc of points and this outer arc of points. So then we can draw everything in between them. 
and what this points per arc thing means. That's just how many points your how many little dots are making up your arc. So any number is fine. I like my round powers of two. A couple other things we need to say points inner and points outer. That's going to be a packed vector two array uh, because that's what the draw polygon function likes. So just do a couple of those. And I'll explain why we're doing two separate arrays in just a minute. So now let's go down here and say for, sorry, for J in range points per arc plus one, uh, using J, we can't use I again because we're already using an I up there. And what we're gonna do now is so we have an inner arc and an outer arc, and but we need to know where are these points, where are these points? We're gonna, let's switch colors here. We're gonna draw a line at this angle, say, okay, we're gonna get this point and that point. And we're gonna draw a line at this angle. We're gonna say, okay, get, get this point, get this point. Draw a line at this angle, get that point and that point and so on uh, for the rest of the arc. And that's what this is. We're working through each angle. So let's get that angle first. If our angle is equal to uh, start rads times no, start rads plus J times end rads minus start rads divided by points per arc. And then from that, we can get our points inner dot appends uh, the point we're going to add to our inner arc and we'll say inner radius wait what, why is it mad oh i declared it again that's why points inner dot appends inner radius times vector two dot from angle tau minus angle and same thing for outer except with the outer radius and so now we have these two arcs of points we have an arc here and an arc here but we, because we went in this order if we just add them next to each other the system is going to think the shape looks like this, like it went in and then back up and then back over. And it's not going to be able to draw that because that's not a convex shape. We want to go like that and then out and then back over. So we actually have a shape to draw. So we're going to call points outer dot reverse to reverse the order of the points in that array. So then when we call our draw polygon, say points inner plus points outer, it's going to get a coherent shape. We also have to give it a packed color array. Um, instead of just a single color, so just say packed color array with a uh, with an array inside it and give it the highlight color. Uh, that's for if you want to make a, something with a gradient. Uh, you can play around with that if you want. I'm going to stick with one color for now. And now when we hop over here, uh, reload if you need to. We can highlight anywhere in our selection wheel and it'll show what we're highlighting. So let's pull up our uh, main game again to test. Uh, we can again add to pull it up, hold tab to stay. We can go around, we can select wherever cell we want and then release. So there's just one thing left to do now and that's have the game know what we selected and update our equipped tool. Popping back into our UI code, we have this code here we made earlier to uh, show and hide the selection wheel. Uh, so instead of just hiding, we want to add a pull function that says close. First thing that's going to do is going to be to hide it. Oh, let's test that real quick. Okay, all good. We also want the ability to know what we selected. So let's return options selection a dot name and that's going to go in to our it's going to go into our options list 
these things we set up here and get whatever name we set here. So the shovel, the nun, the jug, the fishing rod. That's going to return that value to here. So we can say var tool is equal to that. And then we can say label.text is equal to player equips tool tool. Oh, I need to add those instead of giving a comma. There we go. So let's test that out. Hold this up and select the shovel and bingo. It knows that we're selecting whatever tool we want now. We can even deselect all the tools. And there you have it. Um, you have a configurable selection wheel where you can adjust these parameters for whatever you want to put in it and use it for whatever emotes, tools, or anything else you want. Have a good day.